Please turn with me to Philippians chapter number 3. I'm going to read a couple of verses. Verse number 13 and verse number 14. Pretty familiar passage of scripture here. It says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgiving those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Tonight, with the help of the Lord, I want to talk to you on this subject, a subject that I'm sure a lot of us have dealt with in our lives. That's dealing with Regret. You can be seated. Most, if not all of us, have played the woulda, shoulda, coulda game. Am I right? I wish I would have done this. I should have done that. I, I, I could have gone there. I could have done that instead. I, I wish I wouldn't have gone there. I shouldn't have went there. All of us have second-guessed decisions that we've made, whether they be in our professional or our personal lives. This is only natural. However, it becomes unnatural when our shouldas start to take control of our lives. See, one of the biggest ways that Satan tries to get at us is with regret. It's so easy to go back and relive moments and memories that we aren't proud of. Satan will do anything possible to get us mentally. See, regret can be a devastating monster if we don't keep it in check. How many of us in here tonight have some regrets from your past? And I can raise my hand. Each one of us has some kind of regret that we deal with. Maybe it was a financial decision, or a relationship issue, or something that you have done that you weren't supposed to do. See, the dictionary defines regret as to feel sad or sorry about. To have regrets about something. See, life may not always be fair tonight. But see, things happen. We may begin to regret something that you've done. See, it's what we do with that regret that matters. Came across a little story. It's called Temporary Castles. It's more of a little poem, I guess. It says, a little boy is on the beach. On his knees, he scoops and packs the sand with plastic shovels into a bright red bucket. Then he upends the bucket on the surface and lifts it into the light of the little Architect, a castle tower is created. All afternoon he will work, spooning out the moat, packing the walls, bottle tops will be sentries, popsicle sticks will be bridges, a sand castle will be built. Big city, busy streets, rumbling traffic. A man in his office at his desk, he shuffles papers into stacks and delegates assignments. He cradles the phone on his shoulder and punches the keyboard with his fingers. Numbers are juggled and contracts are signed. And much to the delight of the man, a profit is made. All his life he will work, formulating the plans, forecasting the future. Annuities will be centuries. Capital gains 
will be bridges. An empire will be built. Two pillars of two castles. They have much in common. They shape granules and grandeurs. They see nothing and make something. They are diligent and determined. And for both, the tide will rise and the end will come. Yet that is where the similarities cease. For the boy sees the end while the man ignores it. Watch the boy as dusk approaches. As the waves near, the wise child jumps to his feet and begins to clap. There is no sorrow, no fear, no regret. He knew this would happen. He is not surprised. And when the great breaker crashes into his castle, his masterpiece is sucked into the sea. He smiles. He smiles, picks up his tools, takes his father's hand, and goes home. The grown-up, however, is not so wise. As the waves of years collapse on his castle, he is terrified. He hovers over the sandy monument to protect it. He blocks the waves from the walls he has made. Salt water soaked and shivering, he snarls at the incoming tide. It's my castle, he defies. The ocean need not respond, but know to whom the sand belongs. I don't know much about sand castles, but children do. Watch them and learn. Go ahead and build, but build with a child's heart. When the sun sets and the tide takes, applaud. Salute the process of life. Take your father's hand and go home. Kind of puts it into perspective for you a little bit. How many of you are trying to protect your mistakes? Because that's, a, that's what determined who you are today. Are you laying there trying to keep the waves from crashing around you? You see, it's time to get up. It's time to stop holding on to your past failures or your mistakes. Let the tide be like the waves of forgiveness. Let it take your regret and your failures in life, the things that you wish you could change, and let it just wash them out to sea, into the sea of forgetfulness tonight. The old poem that they usually would say it different meanings. My parents had the plaque on their mantle as I was growing up, and I can remember from this day seeing it. It says, God grant me this serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, Enjoying one moment at a time. <clears throat> Accepting hardships as the pathway to peace. Taking as he did the sinful world. As it is, not as I would have it. Trusting that he will make all things right. If I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life. And to bring me happy with him forever in the next. You see, church, we may not be able to change our past, or our spouse's past, or anyone else's past tonight. You see, what we can do is keep our eyes on that prize tonight that's waiting for us up in heaven. An initial sin or mistake leads to regret, which is followed by some destructive coping mechanisms which brings more sin more mistakes which prompts 
more regret. And on and on the downward spiral goes. I regret doing this, so I'm, I'm going to cope by, by doing this. But down the road, you regret doing that. So then, you've got to figure out something that can help you with that regret. And before too long, all you're doing is living a life full of regrets. A life full of shoulda, coulda, wouldas. You see, some of the things that the world turns to coping mechanisms with drugs, alcohol, overeating, gambling, pornography, escapism, or inappropriate relationships. You see, when we rely on these kind of things to cope with the guilt and hopelessness, we find that regret begets regret. And then the cycle just keeps on continuing. There may be some regrets in this room tonight. I can say for one, I regret a lot that I did in my past. There's a lot of things that I'm not happy about, I'm not proud of. But you see, we can't live without regrets. We can't live by our regrets. We have to make the decision that I'm going to get beyond what happened 10 years ago. I'm going to get beyond what happened 15, 20 years ago. I'm going to get beyond what I did. Because I know there's a prize waiting for me when this race is over. I'm not going to sit back and regret the things that somebody else did that hurt me. Because you see, I know that there's a God that can take that regret and turn it around into something even bigger. Amen. And let's face it, you regret stuff long enough and you may be in a church service. The power of God's moving through the place. But you sit there. Arms crossed. Sitting down in the pew while everybody else is up worshiping. And you leave the same way you came. Nothing changes. Because you're sitting on that regret. You're laying in front of that castle tonight as the waves are beating it. And you're saying, no! That's what I built! Don't! Don't tear it down! That's, that's who I am! I built that. I'm the architect. But you see, the one thing that we don't want to do is regret not listening to God. Because so we don't want to hear Him say those words, depart from me, for I knew you not. I want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Right. Yeah. Right. I don't want him to say, well, 
You held on to some regrets of your past. You held on to some things that you should have let go of, but I forgave you for. Let's face it. God forgives and forgets. But we still can regret those things. Come on. That's right. And if the devil knows that you regret those things, he's going to bring it up time and time and time again. Until he tricks you into falling back into the same trap that you were in before. Well, how do you know that? Well, personal experience. And I'm sure each and every one of us in this room has had something similar that happened to them. You see, when you live a life of regret, you feel like you don't have a, your life doesn't have meaning. You see, when you give that regret to God, you say, God, you've forgiven me of this. Right. I don't want any part of it anymore. Right. Those are some things that happened when I was younger. I say, God, I don't want to remember them at all. I don't even think about it ever. Wipe it from my memory. You know what? I don't constantly live in what I've done. Does it ever get brought up? Yeah. The devil does everything he can to knock you off your feet when things are going right. That's true. That's true. Do I regret moving up here? No, I do not. Do I regret going on the path that I've gone? Not one bit. You see, when you're in God's will, you're not going to be living a life of regret. When you're in God's will, you're not going to be sitting there, sitting in a corner moping and pouting. Because so and so brought up something I did ten years ago. You see, when God forgets and forgives, it's like that tidal wave coming in, sure. taking it back out. The castle that was there one minute, that wave comes and crashes over it, takes it back out. It's just like it was before. A clean slate. Yes. No more needing to live in the regrets tonight. See, you can't let the regrets of your life pull you down tonight. If you feel that's what you, what's happening, you've got to make sure that you give them to God. You've got to make sure that you're doing everything that you can. Sundays and Thursdays, Mondays at prayer. Tuesday and Wednesday at home, Friday nights and Saturday nights at home. Right. Make sure you're doing whatever it takes yes. to make sure that the lifetime of regret is in your lifetime. It said in the scriptures, said, Brother, I Count not myself to apprehend it. But this one thing I do. He says, forgetting those things which are behind. That's the first step to dealing with regret. To forget about it. If you've asked God to forgive you about it, it's taken care of. Right. They're gone. 
God's washed them away. He's put them in the sea of forgetfulness tonight. The second part of that says, reaching forth under those things which are before. I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. See, we're all called to a higher calling tonight than living in a life of regret. Than living life in the past. If you live life in the past, you can't go to a life in the future. That's true. We have to make sure that we're living a life that shows that we're running towards that goal. We're running towards that prize tonight. Because that's what we need to be at. It's time for somebody tonight to lay goals and regrets. It's time for somebody to, to say, you know what? I may have messed up. I may have messed up horribly, but you know what? I came to an altar. I asked them to forgive me. I asked whoever it was to forgive me. It's haunted me for so long, but you know what? Tonight, tonight is the night that I must say, okay, right. regret no more. Amen. Right. Because I want to see that higher call. I want to see where it is God wants to take me tonight. Right. Church, if I lived in life with regret, I probably wouldn't be standing here where I am today. If you lived a life of regret, regretted every single thing that you've ever done, day after day after day, I dare say some of us will be in this room tonight. Whatever Satan comes against you with your regret, what name can we call? Amen. Amen. We can call on the name of Jesus tonight. Because the Bible says in the name of Jesus, demons have to flee. Right. That's right. And the name of Jesus regrets can crumble. And the name of Jesus, those things which you've done, you don't have to worry about it anymore. That's right. Can we say it? Regret. Seems like such a harmless word. You know, sometimes we can regret not listening to the preacher. Sometimes we can regret not coming up to an altar. See, we can do something about those regrets. We can say, okay, Lord, you may be dealing with me on something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of it right now. That's it. I'm gonna say, God, you know. It's been bothering me for so long. But I feel you're dealing with me, honey. What the pastor said that night, I should have listened. 
See, you want to do what it takes before it's too late. Before it's too late to regret it anymore. Don't regret tonight. We don't know when we do this on Thursday nights, but I feel like we need to come to the altar tonight. I feel like there's some people in here tonight that have some regrets in their past that they want to get rid of tonight. You don't completely get him tonight. There's been enough living in your past. Don't let the things of your past determine who you are right now. And the things of the future. But the promise Let the promise tonight of those early things trying to Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. 
as a testimony for somebody else. That may be going through a same or similar situation to yours. And by you sharing that testimony of how you were able to get over that, whatever it may have been, that's when God helps you to realize. Now, the table is turned. Now that regret is not a regret anymore. Now it's a testimony. That's right. That's right. We need a little life of testimonies tonight. Yes. That's right. Each and every one of us in here has.